A monster that doesn't make me feel happy is my next monster. It's the Brundlefly from <laughs> 1986's readaptation of the movie The Fly. And this monster, on the other hand, is... um. It's a very unique concept because we start with this overly eccentric scientist in Seth Brundle who has felt that he developed the way for um, teleportation via these telepods. And so on his, um, you know, on his various attempts of, you know, teleporting and everything, he decides now, you know, balls to the wall, I'm going to teleport myself. What he didn't account for is that when he teleported himself, a housefly got into one of the telepods. And because these things were, you know, they're just machines, they didn't know how to differentiate the DNA from, you know, human DNA, fly mm -hmm. DNA, and then transport as individual um, organisms so they spliced the DNA and what came out of the other pod was a combination of the two and with that being said we end up getting one of the most iconic and just gut-wrenching slow transformations mm -hmm. from man to monster I've ever seen on film um, it just it is gut-wrenching to watch what this man goes through because it starts off he feels like he has evolved in a sense like this this teleportation has made him um almost superhuman he's he's jumping off the walls he's doing gymnastics yeah. he's i mean he's pleasing <laughs> the ladies everyone's happy he's ripping wrists out the sockets arm wrestling he he was so yeah, cool he's, it's like you know you had to jump for a week you know yeah you, you he know, was you get that boost he know? was so cool that he wore a leather jacket with no yeah. shirt underneath like you got to feel like you cool if you're doing that okay <laughs> <laughs> so, my, my, man my man was, he was, hey, he was taking people's women he was, he was, he was living la vida loca okay and uh, but so what ends up happening is then you know after the uh euphoric stage um the decomposition starts and my goodness gracious it is it is so gross to see as it happens i mean his fingernails start coming off his ears start falling off limbs start falling off i mean even to the point where he can't uh digest food properly he's throwing up this this crazy looking vomit on his food and then slurping it that's back up eat, that's how flies eat that's how they eat yeah. and so, to so see, actually that's actually more efficient it's more consider. efficient <laughs> but it's not efficient when you are a human it okay nasty. it was nasty to see yeah, i'm and, leaving when dinner time if y'all eating yes. like that I'm and like, and you know and and, and this whole time super you, bowl party let me know when the snacks coming out yeah no 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 step no. outside yeah <laughs> if old boy gonna start throwing up on the wings I, i'm out of here you know but but the thing is is that <laughs> That, you know, as this is happening, you know, even yeah. though we know that a monster is around the corner, like, I really feel bad for him. Like, like this is the only monster in cinematic history that I will ever feel bad for. That doesn't really make me scared. It makes me sad to see what this man is going through. And, you know, as, as he, he's just decomposing posing in just this various forms and turning less human more fly but then also something unique in its own we ultimately see him shed the human skin and what comes out of this skin is something so unique and so like visually um memorable like it's not a fly it's not a man it's just it's something else and you know it's it, it's like it's big it's menacing it's slimy but it has these big old sad eyeballs and you just you can tell that whatever <laughs> human is left in there like you see that in these big bug like eyes and it's not that he's happy doing what he's doing he's doing it because he has no other options mm -hmm. and you know like i said to, to 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 see a monster do monstrous things but you actually feel bad for it that was something that i've never experienced outside of in I think this that's movie good monster stuff man like and that's going back to frankenstein it's like yes I mean, like i think that's also an effective angle you go for all out ferocity but if you can add a sympathetic sympathetic element to the monster yes. man, i think that even pushes it higher in like, the rankings you know dude at the end when when my man when he, when all else fails and he's just kind of like he's at the end of his rope and he takes his little claw thing grabs the shotgun and puts this to his head and wants you know, wants his girl to blow his brains out man 
it makes me want to get misty, man. It makes my eyeballs want to sweat a little bit. So mm-hmm. this 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 particular monster will always be forever etched in my brain um, for various reasons. But you know, it is just so. It is scary on a whole nother level just because of mm-hmm. this progression from human to monster yeah. with the emotional compass that it carries. Yeah, definitely, man. 